I'm James Hislop, I'm the Head of Travel Science and Natural History. Here we are in our warehouse and offices with all of the fossils and scientific instruments that we put through sale here at Christie South Kensington. We have the leg of a cave bear that went extinct in Europe in the last ice age. I like to think we're one of the broadest topics that we sell here at Christie's. This is actually a cast of one of the famous complete dodo skeletons. There are still treasures to be discovered out there. This actually came from a car boot sale. It's made by the most important instrument maker of the 18th century, a man called Benjamin Martin, a model of the universe. This is a gagot. It's a very unusual and rare geological formation, almost abstract works of art, but 30 million years old and completely natural. The most exciting part of my job is that time you get to spend with the artworks and the objects. And you get to really understand the object, who's made it, what it's for, its beauty. And then I thought I'd bring along a couple of items from uh, my own collection. The painful thing you learn quite quickly is I'm never going to have a T-Rex. I don't have the money, I don't have the space for it. But on the academic side, you can buy what I call paper fossils. It's not the first specimen that's found that gets the name forevermore. It's the first time it appears in print in scientific literature. Published in 1906, it's the birth certificate for T-Rex. This is a fossil that dates to 3.43 billion years ago. And what's special about this rather unremarkable looking piece of rock is each of these lines here have been confirmed as layers of um, a stromatolite, a type of bacteria or algae growing. So this is everyone's great, 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 and so on, granddaddy. As a specialist, you have to learn to spot fakes. This is ostensibly an 18th century equinoctial ring dial, except it's not. It's actually quite a malicious fake. This plate in the middle actually belongs to a completely different type of instrument. So as it stands, this piece of brass has no scientific working value whatsoever. The best advice I can give someone who's thinking about starting a scientific collection is in the first instance to buy what you like. And from that you'll develop a sense of your own taste, the types of items that you want to explore next, and it will tell quite a nice story and it's a personal thing what you're buying and choosing.